Galera Manager is now generally available. So um, what are we going to talk about today? Mostly, we're going to focus on the fact that you can now um, deploy a fully managed cluster, of course, in AWS. In fact, we will go through a, a fairly quick demo of that. You can also deploy a cluster on user-provided hosts. We can also monitor an existing cluster. Uh, we also use clone SSD for MySQL 8 deployment as opposed to using uh, Maria backup for the Maria backup deployment. Also, I'll talk to you about deploying uh, various, uh, uh, deploy all the various servers that we support and uh, utilizing all the metrics that are available. So we have over 620 metrics and you can effectively manage your Galera cluster with all of them. So of course, it wouldn't be complete if I didn't give you a little quick introduction to Codership, the company behind uh, Galera cluster. We, uh, the developers and experts of Galera, established in 2007, Codership has been making releases for um, a very long time now. It uh, got the mainline inclusion into MariaDB 5.5. Uh, which was some software that I would say has been released uh, for um, for a very, very long time already. And it was released inside of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 even. So CentOS 7 comes with, comes with that. And then, uh, of course, we have... Um, uh, it also ended up going into, uh, you know, later releases like MariaDB 10, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6. And uh, we at Codership, of course, build it against MySQL, um, you know, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, And now, of course, we prefer you to really only use 5.7 and 8.0, mostly because these are the supported uh, MySQLs uh, today. There, there is uh, not much reason for you to uh, do something uh, be beyond that. So uh, we, we prefer if you use the latest release. And naturally we want to support the latest releases because the latest releases are the ones that include uh, Galera, Galera 4. Uh, it's a, still run by three founding engineers, Seppo, the CEO, Timu, the CTO, and uh, Alexei, uh, who's, uh, who's actually the person responsible for designing the Galera manager. So um, this is, so it's very exciting, of course, that uh, he, he, I mean, he does other things too, but he, this is what he's focused on. Company uh, focuses on a services business model, producing mostly open source software. Uh, Galera manager, of course, is, is available for you to try, utilize, play with. Uh, and uh, we think uh, you should definitely, definitely use it. And and of course, uh, Codeship's software is used by thousands of users in, in multiple industries. And naturally, you would imagine that uh, it is production ready. Many people run three node Galera clusters without a hitch in, in production. And uh, in this spans multiple industries from telecoms to e-commerce to uh, gaming betting. Uh, of course, you know, your usual SaaS, PaaS, IAS. Uh, it, and it counts uh, millions of downloads, not just from uh, Codeship's website, but also from the distributions that ship it. So you may be already familiar with MariaDB Galera cluster. You may also be familiar with Pacona ExtraDB cluster. All of this is practically based on um, Codeship software. So it is, it is of course, uh, highly, highly uh, recommended that you um, you know you you use it take a gander. So you know first things first you know we should cover that there's three types of replication in the MySQL MariaDB Percona world. There is the default replication which is asynchronous. This is very very fast. There are practically no guarantees uh, that. Uh, that, that your transaction will make it into a secondary. Basically, you can write to a primary and uh, there is uh, no guarantee that the, the secondary or the slave will actually receive the transaction. And then it, there is no way to handle automatic failover. 
So if the master, the primary disappears, you have to somehow use a, a framework to handle promoting the secondary to becoming the new master. And then you may also have, of course, data loss if the secondary is lagging. And you can tell this if you are an experienced MySQL user by doing something like show slave status. When you, when you type show slave status, you will see that there is this one field at the bottom called seconds behind master. If it is seconds, if the seconds behind master is say 300 seconds behind master, that is practically it, it being uh, five minutes, right? So 60 seconds times five is, is, is 300 seconds. So that would mean that if the master disappeared, you could have potentially lost five minutes worth of inserts and updates. Um, and this is, of course, uh, not very good because um, you have now lost the last five minutes of transactions. And naturally, when the master does come back up, assuming there was no data loss, you will now have to replay those uh, bin logs manually. There is no way to, to automatically fail back or give you your data back. So this is a very inconvenient process. So there are, of course, frameworks to handle automatic failovers. And this is uh, frameworks typically will encourage you to use semi-synchronous replication. So how does that, that work? You have one, you have of course one master primary and you will have multiple secondaries, but every transaction is guaranteed to be committed to one other secondary. This is uh, to ensure that if the master goes away, that, that at least one secondary is as current as the master and that is now the candidate uh, master and will be promoted to becoming the new master uh, or the new primary during a failover. Naturally, because it has the right to one secondary, you will uh, need a framework and it will of course increase the transaction commit penalty time. So what this really means is if you have previously been able to put in a transaction in 30 microseconds, uh, now uh, 30 milliseconds, sorry, uh, now your transaction may take about 130 milliseconds. Why, why, why do we add this? Because we are now going to, of course, do a network hop, so we can't go faster than the speed of light. And this is, um, of course, a, a, a slower degradation in inserts, but it is not a, not a huge problem because nowadays most machines are extremely fast and your applications are extremely fast and transactions tend to be small which then meet, leads me down into the virtually synchronous Galera cluster, which is actually true multi-master replication. You do not need any automatic failover frameworks to handle uh, uh, failover because every node is actually a copy of the other node. It has the exact same data set. And basically, of course, because I mentioned that there is a slowdown uh, when you're doing inserts, uh, it is only natural that when you're writing the three nodes, but there will be a, a little bit more of a slowdown. But we have, of course, mitigated that because we only need to certify the right set upon replication, at which point we can tell your application to be okay because we are, so, so we only need to do certification and then, and then we can move on. And this is, of course, um, extremely uh, useful because it means that uh, typically you are not only, you are not uh, having much performance degradation and we can work over wide area networks, basically. So we can work in the cloud without any issue. And of course, uh, there is no need for a framework because everything is fully built in. So this is a, a huge, huge benefit, of course. Naturally, Galera does not require you to have any kind of proxy or load balancer in front of it because all nodes are equal. All nodes are fully capable of doing read write. Uh, you must remember, however, that um, all nodes must be equally configured. So you can, so Galera will perform as fast as your slowest node. That more or less loosely translates to the to if you have three machines, if two machines have four gigabytes of RAM and one machine has eight gigabytes of RAM, of course, nobody has machines with four and eight gigabytes of RAM in production. Um, the best Galera can perform is up to uh, using up to four gigabytes of RAM. So that machine with eight gigabytes of RAM now actually has four gigabytes basically spare. 
Galera has automatic node provisioning so you can add and remove nodes. And this is why I was going to mention that there are multiple ways for us to add and remove nodes. And uh, that is usually via uh, incremental state transfer or full state snapshot transfer. And when you add a node, if the node was previously part of a cluster, it actually has a, a GRA state .dat file. And this file will be able to tell you if, if your GCache is big enough, uh, how much data can be transferred over. Uh, and this will, and if, if the disconnection was not too long, it will get an incremental state transfer, which you can consider like an rsync of the data directory. However, if it is a new node, or it was, uh, or the GCache page size uh, was too small and it has exceeded the time limit, you will get a full state snapshot transfer. And that is uh, basically, uh, you. it basically is an rm-rf of your var libmysql and then a full uh, rsync or cp. And this is, SSD can happen via, you know, tools like extra backup, Maria backup, or mysql dump or rsync. Now, in MySQL 8, the version that we are now shipping, the latest release, we've even hooked up an even faster way to do this via the clone uh, plugin. So we actually, in Galera Manager, by default, use clone SST to migrate your data from an existing node to uh, a joiner node. So there is always this joiner node concept and a donor node concept. And you, as Galera cluster users, are able to see these concepts inside of your uh, show status like WS rep. You can see the status uh, variables available to you. In addition to that, of course, each node has uh, identical data and I already mentioned the replication is virtually synchronous. So it is, it is virtually synchronous because as I said, we have to focus on the certification of the rights that we're not actually copying the data before we say, okay, because that can take time. So, of course, virtually synchronous replication is good. It is fast. We, uh, apparent, we don't have any issues with this. We are, we are generally quite happy. Uh, it is also very highly available with no data loss. And you obviously have consistent data across all nodes where there is no single point of failure. So I do a lot of consulting uh, and uh, training. And uh, we often hear people say, we are launching vir virtual instances and we are using um, say VMware and we are using a SAN to offer uh, storage for our Galera cluster. When I say no single point of failure, I'm also saying you are not running on the same physical host, which means on a virtual machine you run Affinity, and you're also not running on the same physical storage. Because if you happen to run a SAN and the SAN goes away and you have three Galera cluster nodes stored on various uh, portions of the SAN, then you have lost your entire cluster because you've lost your entire valid MySQL. We, our setup would be ideal if you had no single point of failure, uh, shared nothing storage, shared nothing architecture works a charm. We of course use quorum based failure handling, which is why it is imperative you start a minimum of three Galera cluster nodes, not two, not one. Uh, and um, because we follow a quorum algorithm, we prefer you to also have a odd number of nodes because if you have an even number of nodes, you may not be able to have the majority quorum when uh, when nodes go down. Now, if you can somehow afford to have a third node, we of course provide the option to have an arbitrator daemon called Galera Arbitrator Daemon, called Garb D for short. You are fully, fully capable of uh, setting that up. However, we do not support Garb D uh, configuration and deployment within Galera Manager. So within Galera Manager, we expect you to set up a minimum of three Galera cluster nodes. We also use optimistic concurrency controls, which uh, means that, of course, there is a priority transaction, a victim transaction, and this is all tied in with our certification algorithm. We have automatic transaction conflict detection, so your application can actually, before it even receives a failure, We'll be able, we, Galera can actually retry it because we have an option called WSREP retry auto commit. And we can set this option to say five and means we, Galera itself will retry this five times before it says something has, has failed. We support parallel threads, parallel replication. This is not an issue. And you don't need any kind of weird framework. You don't need to designate nodes for, for reads. Configuration is simple. 
if you set up a Galera cluster properly, now this either manually or via Galera manager, you will have next to no problem going forward. And I, I can more or less say you will probably have, uh, you know, next to no downtime. That's the other bonus. So Galera is actually very, very, um, very, very uh, useful software overall. And uh, I all I can say is yes, you generally shouldn't have issues uh, running it. Galera is also, of course, optimized for the cloud. So um, I think not what, not long ago I did a webinar, and you can catch the video of how we run a three-node Galera cluster in each in a data center in London, a data center in Singapore, and another data center in San Francisco. So we actually ran a nine-node Galera cluster, and uh, this is fully functional. Um, and uh, and actually not a, not as slow as one would think because we have topology aware replication. So each transaction is sent to the data center only once. So uh, you can yes you can see that there is some kind of slowdown, but we only write the three nodes in one data center, and then we elect nodes in the other two data centers. And we do this via having segments, network segments, which we also configure inside your my.cnf or your right side replication. This segment configuration is also available and exposed to you in the Galera Manager. Uh, what is not exposed and underneath is the detection and automatic eviction of unreliable nodes. So if you are flappy, if you have a flappy network, or if you are having any kind of node failure, uh, we don't need you to have any um, uh, manual intervention. We just kick the node out, and then you can be paged. Uh, we also, of course, uh, have uh, the ability to do automatic split brain recovery and management. Again, if you have a three node cluster, you don't use dangerous functions that say ignore split brain or ignore quorum, you'll have no problem. Also, the other thing that I'd like to bring your attention to is we can do data in motion encryption. So we fully support SSL out of the box, easy for you to configure. And in fact, we can even reload SSL certs um, uh, willy nilly. So uh, traffic encryption is key in the cloud because uh, it, Replication happens in plain text. So you really do not want people to be looking at your at, at your replication. So I uh, highly recommend that uh, you, you definitely uh, turn on uh, SSL. Galera Manager is completely free. It's a GUI and it works on uh, Amazon Web Services. It works on your, on your cloud, uh, on your own hardware, uh, either to deploy or to just take over to monitor. It can create clusters, it can segment nodes, it can also do geo-distributed clusters. So we can create it across multiple regions, we can add, remove nodes, we can we can have monitoring charts, it's fully web-based, extremely functional software, easy to use. I and we're gonna go through it. So quick quick thing to understand is you know we have the idea of regions in Amazon, uh, which is a, basically a data center location. And by the way, you, you can run this on Google Cloud yourself. The only difference or, or even Azure or Rackspace or whatever. The only difference with our AWS um, fit is that we, we can actually just get an AWS access key and secret key. We'll test that it works. And if we can assure that it works, we're actually just good to go to launch automatically on your behalf. So, so while we will not bill you, Amazon will bill you automatically. So uh, from a security standpoint, make sure your Galera manager has, has a nice long password so later i'm going to set a, a very simple silly password but in production of course you you, you once you have uh, g given the a aws secret keys of course people can you know any if once you've logged in you can launch into this available these zones are of course isolated from failures from other az's uh, but it's still kept in the same region now when we launch with galera manager we actually will launch in um uh, one region uh, we will not switch to multiple az's uh, that's not been a, a request yet, uh, but uh, it, it, it will be in one region in one AZ uh, for AWS. Now, when you when you choose to do this in your own hardware, you just need to specify uh, basically uh, SSH key, and then Galera can take Galera Manager can take over. So now, while I don't know if we can do uh, multiple demos today. We, what I've done is I'm also going to start packing videos. So we're going to so watch our blog because we're going to have videos uh, on how to do all of this, plus a lot more text around it as well. So I'm just in the process of editing the videos down into something small. And I, I believe we also upload these videos to, to YouTube. 
So you, you will have point-by-point uh, -point access on how you can do this later as well. So, uh, you know, why, why do we want you to run in EC2? And, you know, we've had requests for next for like DigitalOcean, Linode, Vulture, uh, Google Cloud, and you know, you actually can help prioritize where we go next. How do we prioritize where we go next? One is you could be a paying customer. You could contact your customer support representative and say, look, please, you know, I want Gallery Manager to work on Google Cloud or I want Gallery Manager to do X. And that and you know, as a paying customer, I, I this is this is my requirement. I expect this in six months. And you know, that's how we 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 can we drive development. Um so yeah, contact your friendly uh, customer service rep. So why, why do it in AWS? Uh, many people like to run uh, Galera inside EC2 in production. We, uh, and it's not, it's not available. Amazon prefers to sell you RDS. RDS is you know, regular uh, MySQL with master-slave replication, but actually it doesn't use master-slave. What it uses is DRBD across availability zones. And of course they expose the ability to have a slave for you. Amazon also has something called Aurora. For regular MySQL, people want to get more configurability out of the box. And that's something you can get out with Galera Manager. And of course, cost-wise, you may pay a little more. Um, I haven't done a cost-based uh, analysis between AWS, EC2, uh, Galera Manager, rollout instances versus others, but we have done in the past. And I don't think Amazon's changed their pricing all that much during the last, uh, you know, uh, year and a half. So, in, you know, in many instances where people set up Galera, Man Galera cluster in an EC2 instance, you manage it yourself. This is also true when you set it up by a Galera Manager. Uh, you know, what does it take to set up a Galera cluster? Of course, nothing beyond the usual setup, but if you uh, want to avoid doing that, you want to do point click, Galera manager is the right thing for you. All our Galera clusters are gonna be run inside EC2 instances. You, uh, of course, you know, will get virtually secure replication, automatic node management, etc. cetera. Um, you run Galera in AWS for the features. You know, Galera is extremely highly available. This is why people use Galera. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you know you can actually literally launch uh, launch an AWS um, instance. Now I want to caution you that you want to only launch x86 instances. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they launch ARM instances, and uh, we're going to go through that later as well. You also need to open up the security groups, so SSH for login, TCP for MySQL, uh, Galera ports, UDP ports. It, it, it's it, it's all kind of a hassle if you want to set this up manually. Um, so, you know, it looks something like this. This is a, you know, reasonably custom uh, and takes a lot of effort. We can, Galera Manager will handle all of this magic for you. And that, that's, the, that's the bonus. We don't have to edit any security groups and I'm going to show you. Then you have to turn off SC Linux during setup or you have to open up the pods and you have to do all of this SE Manage pod 3306 and then you've got to do it for all the pods that Galera has. You've also got to do it for the firewall. Galera Manager will handle all this for you. So. We do all this simpler, better. So why 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 bother? So you know, let's focus on using Galera Manager to do all of this. And this is just a, a refresher of of what Galera Manager does. And you know, our latest release, GA release, supports the fully unmanaged nodes. So you can do this for either monitoring or fully setting up an unmanaged node. So just provide bare bare Linux OS, uh, and uh, you know, we just do it via SSH. I, I use very small instances and I'm going to use very small instances during um, this uh, demo. You have to take caution that very small instances can actually, will not run for very long. So one thing Galera, uh, does, Galera Manager doesn't do today is it doesn't clean, clean up logs or allow you as a user to configure how large logs you should get before you have to purge logs. So we actually recommend you setting up Galera Manager with a hundred gigabytes of storage at the very least, because it, it, it will ingest data. Uh, and uh, if you don't, um, our, our default log expiry is 30 days. And this is not something that you can change um, out of the box yet. But the good news is this is cloud software. So we can just push updates fairly simply. So uh, we are already working on this, uh, but this is one point of caution to note you may have issues uh, with rolling it out um, uh, and running it for, for long. So that's this is just a very, very minor issue, I would say. So um, yeah, 
I'm going to caution you, of course, to pay full attention to these firewall ports. And uh, you know, I, I'd like to start a demo. So I've got a nice little AWS console here, which I've already started. And I'm going to launch my first instance. It's going to be a very small Amazon Linux 2 instance. So I'm going to use Amazon Linux 2. Again, it's just going to be x86. We support Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 as well. Um, entirely up to you what you choose to use. So I'm going to select this. It is, I'm going to use actually a T2 micro in this case. Uh, you, you know, feel free to use use whatever you like. It is telling us, yes, yes, ports launch. This should be no issue. I need to make sure I have the existing key pair. So let me just really quickly check that. Uh, Let's go for that one. So I got a keeper, gotta make sure I got the keeper handy. No instance. Okay. Small, very small instance here. So I, I don't know what IP I'm going to get just yet. And I have an IP right here. It is probably not ready yet. And then I'd like to bring you to the Galera cluster website. So of course we can click we have all these uh, nice little things here. We just we just click the evaluate gallery manager option, and then of course you know we have uh, we have of course got this very new blog post. Uh, I think I wrote this a while ago. So you we have nice little bits and little bits of notes here. So well worth paying some attention to them. And if we just click the download gallery manager option, it should pop up something magical. So you actually have to submit a form to get access to your installer and then you click submit. If you didn't already previously download, you'll actually get something. So I'm, I'm actually pulling down the GM installer right there. But the good news is so you need to get the GM installer of course to your to your um, instance of course so we can of course do a quick SCP there so if I go to downloads So if it's doing SCP of GM installer to oh, of course. So we actually do need to copy this real quick. So that's a, 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 a way to get the installer uploaded. And uh, now we have that. So we just need to do a chmod plus X GM installer. And you can see here that it actually tells you that you do need to make it a bit larger for everybody to see. So, you know, primarily, this is where we're going to spend some time. So, uh, of course, uh, if you if you report a bug, uh, you can you you're meant to tell us, hey, you know, this is my version of GM installer. In fact, 
I have actually pulled down a nice new version of GM installer right here, by the way. So as I said, cloud is we can just push, push, push. And I myself had no idea we released 1.50. I can hit install. So it's it's basically telling me that uh, I have to run this as root. So sudo su, very simple. Uh, you can of course choose to read uh, end user license agreement. It's um, to ensure you don't, um, you know, Kim Jong Un and stuff. So I'm just going to accept. Uh, I'm going to leave the repository URL blank. I'm going to use the admin user. You need to set a good password here, obviously. Uh, I need to enter the, so here, uh, if you have a domain with certificates, SSL will be enabled. If you don't, we just put an IP, we'll run without SSL. So I'm going to run without SSL at this stage. So as you can see here, it's um, skipping the disable as Linux because it's most likely not there. This does take a little bit of time. So, you know, we will go back uh, fairly quickly to the, to the presentation, mostly because I'd like to tell you that, you know, we have full support for deployment on bare metal. We can monitor unmanaged clusters and hosts. We want to do updating your configuration post deployment. We also want to do upgrading cluster engines. When I say upgrading cluster engines, I mean from say MySQL 5.7 to 8.0, 80 to the next release, or you know from MariaDB 10.4 to 10.5 to 10 uh, and so forth. We can't do cross upgrades from MariaDB to MySQL uh, or, or, or vice versa because they they're not uh, you know they're not generally compatible nowadays. Want to do more mobile layout, more responsiveness. We want to have a web-based SSH console to your host. And of course, we want to do the logging, log, saving and loading of logs and metrics, right? These are all fairly, fairly basic things. So again, we are now mostly setting up the GMD. It's doing a bit of sleep. And uh, well, look at that. So we, we started right here. So here we tell you fairly importantly, ensure the TC ports 88081 are open in the firewall, right? So we just need to go go here, go to security, uh, then go check out the security groups. Uh, otherwise it will not work. So I need to then edit the inbound rules. So I'm going to add a rule for um, HTTP. And I'm going to let all CIDR blocks, and I'm going to add a rule for custom TCP. Again, anywhere IPv4, um, 8081. And then I'm going to save the rules to reload on this instance. And uh, basically, now I can I can literally I'll literally log on to this URL here, which is the Galera Manager URL. And I, I know we only have 10 more minutes, but we should be able to finish it in approximately there. So we have the gallery manager. I'm going to log in. I, of course, do not want to save this password. Et voila. So I have a got gallery manager here. I'm going to add a cluster. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the ability to deploy a fully managed cluster. We have the ability to deploy a cluster on a user provided host, and we have the ability to monitor an existing cluster. So if you've already installed Galera Manager, you just need to use the third option and uh, provide SSH access. If you would like us to node start to do node monitoring, install and uninstall your nodes, that means we'll set up Galera for you, start and stop your nodes. All you need to do is provide a clean Linux Linux image and then we will we will do the install for you via SSH. And of course, the, the, the holy grail is to deploy a fully managed cluster. So, you know, we're just gonna call this cluster EMEA. We have a bunch of options here. 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, MySQL 5.7 and, and MySQL 8. 
So I'm going to choose MySQL 8. We have the ability to for you to add things into the my.cnf if you'd like to maybe set you know buffer pool size etc if you wanted to i'm not going to do that remember i told you about the uh, security groups and so forth we actually have all this wonderful stuff here which basically allows gallery manager ssh access internode communications um, of course we're also going to allow you uh, mysql x access we need port 33060 open 33060 open for Galera 8, uh, MySQL 8, because uh, we use clone SSD. And of course, uh, you know, SSH naturally. Uh, we're going to use the OS uh, Ubuntu 20.04, or, or well, let's use Debian 10. Debian 10 seems like a reasonable OS today. Now, here we have access key ID and, and secret key. We can also specify SSH private key with authorized keys. We don't have to. We don't have any instances here available. But we do need to go grab an access key and a secret key. So if I head on over to my security credentials on Amazon, and I'm actually currently in Frankfurt, you will notice that uh, I can actually pull up an access key. I'm going to create a new access key. This is going to be fairly quick. So I'm just going to pop the access key here. So now I'm going to copy the secret key. This is very cool, by the way. So when I when I paste the secret key here, you notice it's actually connecting to AWS to make sure I have the deploy permissions before it green lights me. And now it green lit me. I'm just going to start at EC2. Now, of course, people will pick A1 as the, as the smallest. Do not do that. A1 is, by the way, ARM. We cannot run on ARM. Galera does not run on ARM. So we do need to find a, a T2 micro. And then I'm going to create uh, the instance. And I'm um, so going to close that real quick. Then I'm going to go back to my management console. So I create the cluster there. Now, of course, there's nothing here. It's all fairly boring. I click Add Node, and I can say I'd like to deploy three nodes. And I just call it EMEA. Again, it's going to use the MySQL 8, and I can actually enter a custom DB config if I wanted to. The segments I talked about, this means that we can actually run across three different network segments. You can have one Galera cluster running across three different AWS segments. I pick EU Central 1. You can actually have uh, segments in multiple places. I have not opted into a bunch of stuff in my Amazon account. You may see something different. We have inherited a SSH private key and an authorized key as well. And now literally all I need to do, so again here, you'll see we've got nice little authorized keys. So I just need to go, I just need to hit the deploy button. And it's actually doing all this magic configuration and I can see what's going on. And I can just do a quick yum install my SQL client. If I'm not mistaken, that's what the package is called. Nope, it's called MySQL actually. It's because I don't want the server installed on this particular instance. Installing MariaDB. Nope, that's not what I want. I actually do need to add the MySQL 8 repository. Never fear, I have other instances for you. So now we're actually setting up uh, security groups. And uh, it does it does do a pause sometimes, and that's OK. You actually get status. Naturally, of course, uh, you know, <laughs> we have to pray to the demo gods to make sure that they allow my demo to run without uh, a hindrance at this stage. We are sleeping for 10 seconds, waiting for EC2 to init the OS and network resources. So that's, that's, a, oh, magic. Okay, so stuff is happening now. We're actually starting to do installation. And this should happen in, you know, all the instances uh, that, that we have here, by the way. Now we chose MySQL 8. So I actually do need to make sure that uh, we have uh mysql 8 access so hang on while i 
so you can see that we're actually creating three instances. It's deployed. I believe I have another instance that I can SSH to. It's got the MySQL. So the reason why MariaDB cannot utilize MySQL can't connect from MariaDB is that they use different client connection protocols. Caching SHA-2 password is a, is the MySQL protocol nowadays. So you can actually see that we are really we are actually installing Galarua cluster, putting it all on Debian. It's an it is doing it all automatically. So we're actually going to have a three node Galarua cluster without any issue fairly soon. And you know, in, we have approximately three minutes. So now, now we are all we are all here making making sure that Galera itself installs fast. Uh, I can't uh, make it go any faster, but um, I can tell you that we are all obviously looking for feedback. So if I click this link, um, this is a very important link. You will realize we have a nice little readme file but uh, we actually track all these wonderful issues here and uh, you know we have people opening up issues and uh, we do respond fairly quickly to them as you can see we have little chats there um, and we have feature requests and uh, so forth so this is this is a prime resource for you because you can just create a new issue and you know as i said the developers all of us, product leads, etc. We all look at it. So here we are, you know, still installing Galera, and you will see the progress. So you can, of course, see the installation is running. Then later you'll see node start is pending. In fact, we are already going to start the nodes. As you can see, statuses are changing. So you know, today, today, this this may be a good thing. So here we already can see two nodes are actually running. And very soon I can just say, we can log on to one of these nodes without any issue. This should be, this should be a good thing for us. We're actually seeing something here saying that there's some kind of execution failure. It's gonna retry. It's basically trying to actually connect to MySQL's daemon. And it is going to start MySQL this soon. Voila, we have finished. So if we go here, we do last five minutes, we do every one second, and we have medium set up as a heads up. Uh, if you want to see uh, if, uh, if there was any, any situation where flow control is paused or anything, we can just add a chart here. So we can just type flow control, and I can just search for it. So I can have the flow control pause, for example, click the add button. And then I have the flow control pause. Actually, this is a duplicate. So we already set it up for you. Um, now we can go down to into clusters. So last five minutes, every one second, medium. You can of course see any log messages in the error log it's telling you that it joined and synced. But the, the beauty of all of this is I can now just type a DB address here. Oops. If I type MySQL dash H dash P, all I need to do now is show the password, which is of course, as you know, the same everywhere. And I've actually connected to a three node Galera cluster show status like WS rep cluster size. We have a three node Galera cluster right there. And since I have here, I can just do create data show databases, create database EMEA. And uh, let me just quickly find some queries I can execute for you. Mostly because uh, that will be fun, more fun than not executing queries naturally. So, um, of course, in the interest of uh, time, I just make copies and pastes here. Oops, use EMEA. And we are literally 
not far off. So I'm inserting data here, and you can see that uh, there's CPU usage, of course. There is uh, replicated. I'm just inserting lots of data here. And you can see that one node is sending all the data. We're actually looking at the WSRF received. So if I actually go for a large here and I go down here, you can see that we are actually having nice right set replication received. This of course should not you know, do any kind of heavy load, but you can see that a lot of the, a lot of the WSRF received is, is, is happening right there. You know, if I, if I go here, you can see that there's WSRF received uh, there is, uh, of course, but you will see that here, uh, there is uh, also WSRF replicated because it is sending the data out from this one node, right? So all the other nodes should have no WSRF replicated because it is not sending any data. Um, and if we go back to the overall cluster view, we can see WS replicated is only happening on one node. Now, if I decided to quit that, and log on to another host and do pretty much the same thing. So if I log on to host two now, which is this host here. And of course, as you would probably know, the passwords would be the same across Galera. If I use EMEA, of course, the data is synced. Um, and now all I need to do is do this, is to insert again you will notice that now this one has a little bit of replicated going for it. And of course, you know, suddenly you will see this one still remains no WS replicated. This one will actually now also show you that it has received some data because it didn't replicate the, the recent transactions. And if we go down here, we switch it back to medium. You'll notice here that uh, another node has been sending data out and you can also see where the received transactions are happening. So all of this can happen very easily and you will see all this configuration going on. And again, I can choose to add a cluster. So I can of course choose to, you know, oh, hang on, I can add a node if I wanted to. I can choose to actually stop this node, for example. So if I choose stop, one node has stopped. I'm still doing inserts without any issue. It's telling you the node has stopped already. So we just have a bit of a repaint error there. Show status like WS rep cluster size. We are on a two node cluster. As you can see, we have degraded performance. We have one node missing. I'm still sending data. And then of course, uh, if we wanted to, I can just do a quick select count star. We can see 540,000 rows. I can restart this fairly simply just by hitting start. And uh, you will see that it will sync the data soon. In fact, we can see that in the logs. I'm just going to continue sending data. Notice started. And uh, literally, it is, it is synced. So if I do select count star from customers here, I should be able to now go back to node one, which I stopped and restarted. Well, that's 150 right there. And use EMEA. I can just do the same exact thing here. Magic. So we're on multiple, so on different nodes, we see different things. Uh, the same exact thing, which is exactly what you want. Now, naturally, we, we, we don't, so on, on Amazon, uh, you know, worth, worth noting is if I go down here, I can see four instances being created. I can, of course, fully tear down. So I can do a lot of things with this cluster. I can actually delete the cluster. I can add nodes. I can do literally what, uh, anything. I can even see deployment logs if need be. Uh, they, they nicely pop up. I can send jobs. Of course, I didn't do any jobs here. Over. I start, started and stopped the cluster. You don't see that here. And of course, um, I can, of course, add custom database engine configuration if need be. 
I can add nodes. Uh, I can also add a cluster so I can manage multiple clusters. This is not a problem. So I can also add nodes to another segment. So if I click add node here, I could say I would like to deploy three more nodes. I would like to deploy this into segment one. I would call this, um, I don't know, SF. Oh, and then I could, you know, pop it into something like AP Northeast one, for example, and I can deploy again, three nodes, except we're finding that T2 micro instances is not there. So I can just go there here, pop that there real quick. And I can deploy yet another three node cluster. And then I'll have a six node gallery cluster in a different region. So all entirely possible when you're done playing with it, of course, you can, you know, just delete the cluster if you like. But of course, in the interest of time, I guess we will not really focus on uh, too much of that. So I'm going to, so I, I, I guess, uh, you know, more or less, I can say that uh, we, we actually have, uh, you know, utilized our time wisely. We, we are open for questions for approximately a couple of minutes at most. You can ask them in the question thing. Uh, so uh, we, we have some questions already. Um, one of them is, can Galra Manager is aware of Docker container implementation or setup? And the answer is, we actually have no issue technically running in a Docker container, but we are not aware of Docker container and setup automatically. So uh, Docker requirements, Kubernetes requirements, these are all future things that are definitely coming, but not there yet. Are there integrations to other host providers, not only AWS at the moment? No, you have to you have to manually specify, um, and I presume you can also see my screen. You have to manually specify when I add a cluster. I can say I would like to deploy it on a user provided host, at which point I have to provide the SSH private key and the authorized keys as well. And uh, you only we only support uh, these few OSs as well as the node configuration that you'd like to do. So you have to provide fresh instances of either one of these, and then we can do. Uh, other hosts, other hosters. Well, basically your provided hosts. And of course, if I choose the monitor existing cluster, it's very similar, except we're going to ask you for your database root password as well. Because that's, we're going to create, we're going to access your existing cluster. So will Gallery Manager configure all MySQL parameters properly on each instance? This, if you have eight gigabytes of memory or 100 gigabytes like buffer pools, et cetera, the answer is yes we will provide optimized configuration based on the type of instance you have. So if you start a very large instance, which 128 gigabytes of RAM, we will not only set the buffer pool size to 128 megabytes, we will set it to about you know 80 gigabytes or something. We will configure everything for you. That's the beauty of Galera Manager. We want to make everything end user configurable. So um, I think there are no other questions. I've taken three questions. Uh, oh, well, we have one last question. Why don't we have Pacona PXE as an option? And that is an excellent feature request, uh, of course. Um, it is not, it is, there's no reason why we don't have it. It is just uh, re related to you know, uh, us doing quality assurance deployment. And as you, you may have noticed, we haven't actually deployed MariaDB 10.6 either. And we, we can do that uh, fairly quickly. So you should you know, definitely head up over here, file, file a, uh, a request saying, hey, I'd like PXE talk to your friendly um, Galera uh, cluster sales representative, and that can also be, be useful. Uh, you, one other last question. Uh, we usually have root volume, log volume, data volume separate. Can Galera manage a provision nodes with multiple volumes? The answer is at the moment, we cannot provision with multiple volumes. Uh, we can only provision on one volume, but uh, it is, Generally, good practice anyway that at, the, at this stage to set up your Galera or MySQL without multiple volumes. We don't really find that there's any reason nowadays to do much separation. Um, but of course, uh, you may have policies uh, otherwise. So um, yeah, um, I'd say thank you all for listening. We, we are, of course, fully open for questions and answers um, beyond this as well. So um, just uh, feel free to um, shoot uh, email to me uh, or, um, or or Sakari or the info at Galera Cluster, but most importantly, remember that this is the right place to file issues. And uh, yeah, so thank you, thank you so much for listening, and uh, and we and uh, 
attending this uh, Galera cluster, Galera manager launch, uh, GA launch webinar. So um, thank you again.